So tell me a little bit about this project of yours, how it all began. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> yeah, quite the pivot from covering celebrities. Uh, right, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I filed uh, for divorce in 2018, knew nothing about the process. And I say I could have started the movie Clueless because I really was clueless about how everything worked when you're going through a divorce, especially all the different kinds of divorces one could go through. And then fast forward to when the pandemic hit and everybody was working from home. There was no entertainment. So now I was working in news, still in the middle of a very high conflict, uh, very contentious and uh, expensive divorce. And I just didn't know where to find information. Google was very overwhelming. And not only that, you can't separate fact from fiction. Everybody looks great on screen. And while I was working on this newscast and uh, just really unglued by the whole process, I heard in the background, let's go to the transportation correspondent. Let's go to the education correspondent. Let's go to the shopping correspondent. And I screamed, where's the divorce correspondent? I'm going through a divorce. And I just, I just started sobbing. And when my job went south uh, and I still couldn't find anybody who covered this exclusively, I said, got nothing else going on. I'm home. Let's just start it and see what happens. And a small column grew to a radio show, expanded to a podcast, and now a TV series and a second column. So why did I do it? To supply people with an education that I didn't have, to vet people, to help people understand that the people that we are interviewing are giving you good, solid information. We're trying to get you educated. We want to make you a smarter client. I don't want you feeling vulnerable by the process. And most importantly, I want to save you time, unwanted stress, and money. Money should go to you, not to all these other people. Exactly. Well, first, I'm very sorry to hear about your divorce. And second, what was the biggest challenge about all this? I mean, I know you said that, you know, going through a divorce in itself is challenging, but what's the biggest challenge about getting this TV series off the ground? I think one of the biggest challenges has been the perception people have. I think one of the most common questions I have gotten from people is, so when you're promoting divorce, what's the first piece of advice you give? I said, I don't promote divorce. And that's, that, that's, you know, that's really where we have to kind of separate one from the other. What do I mean by that? I'm a journalist. My job is to supply information, communicate things that people maybe want to know or need to know. That's what I'm doing here, just on a topic that really has not been covered. And if people do cover it, it's because Celebrity A and Celebrity B announced a divorce. But people really need to understand the whole process. And there's this, there's this like, it's almost like taboo. And people have a perception about what it is. And it's trying to get people to kind of look past that and see why this is so valuable. You know, statistics say up to 50% of all first marriages will end in a divorce, 50%. And so where is the really uh, trusted resource for those people where they can go find information about their situation so they can make smarter decisions for themselves and their families. And what would you say was the biggest reason for divorce that you learned through your research? Uh, I think the biggest, uh, you know, I think one of the biggest uh, things I learned is that um, you should not call the attorney, don't make the attorney the first call. That's number one. You should not, everybody needs to understand uh, the money, the money, the money, the money, because divorce boils down to two things. It's going to boil down to your kids and the money and the assets. And you really need to understand them because when I say that people feel, well, are, are you a gold digger? No, you need to understand what you're entitled to under the law. You need money for everything. You need money to buy a phone so you could do these kind of calls. You need money to keep the lights on, to put food on your table. You are entitled to things under the law. You're not going to get everything, maybe that you're you're letting your imagination run, run wild with you, but you are entitled to whether it's, um, there's nine states that are 
community property states, which is that 50-50, the rest are equitable distribution. One, you have to know that. You have to understand what you have. And not only the assets, are there any debts? Is there a lien on your house? Do you even understand like what's on your credit cards? Are your cars leased? Uh, do you own them? Do you understand what your expenses are every single month? And so when I say to people, you really want to work with your financial advisor or get an accountant or a CDFA, which stands for Certified Divorce Financial Analyst, is because that's what a lot of this is going to come down to. And so if you want to ask for it in a divorce, you have to understand what it is you're asking for. And that's why I always tell people, don't make the attorney the first call. You really need to understand this portion of it first. I never would have thought of that, calling a financial advisor and doing the finance part of it first. Because ever I remember, I've never been through a divorce, but I've always heard from my friends that got divorced and family members always call the attorney first. That's always, but I never would have thought of it that way. That's actually a very interesting point. And you mentioned earlier, there's a few different kinds of divorces. What mm -hmm. do you mean by that? So people think, when they hear divorce, they kind of let their imagination run wild and they think Kramer versus Kramer war the roses. No, only 20% of divorces are considered high conflict divorces. And maybe not to that extreme, but that's where you get the, the and you hear the term the pit bull attorney or the tiger shark attorney. Again, only 20% of all divorces. So what people can do if they can be amicable and work together is they can do what's called mediation. So that's when you sit with a third party neutral and they work with both of you to resolve all the outstanding matters on the table. So that's going to be custody of your children, which is just another word for decision making. Uh, they're going to work out a parenting plan. That's basically visitation with the kids. So who's going to see them what days and where they're going to sleep, how we're going to divide the holidays and time off from school. And then they're going to help you work through all the assets. So by that, I mean bank accounts, retirement accounts. I say that because we're seeing the biggest increase in what's called the gray divorce, the 50 and older category. So they're really looking at their retirement accounts, their 401ks, their pensions. People may have more than one home together and other valuables that they've collected. Some people um, have art collections or they have card collections like collectibles. So a mediator can sit down and say, okay, person one, so-and-so wants this. If so-and-so you know, gets this, what can we give them in return? That's of equal value. They kind of help streamline things and move them forward. The next kind of divorce is um, what's called a collaborative divorce. And this is where you know you both get an attorney and you sign an agreement that says we are gonna fully disclose everything. That means nobody can hide anything or lie with the sole purpose of we're working towards a goal and that's a settlement. Um, if for any reason the you know divorce kind of veers off path and it is going to a contentious situation, the attorneys have to remove themselves and then you have to get new counsel. When you switch attorneys, again, that starts costing money. You know, you need to get the attorney up to speed. They need to transfer everything. I mean, it's it, it does. All these little things add up to a big bill. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to put that money back in their pocket and understand they have many options. That's incredible. Like I said, I never knew any of this. I'm learning so much from you. <laughs> now, when it comes to children, this is what I always wonder because I've seen friends, like I said, friends, parents go through divorce growing up. How does custody work and how, what is the most common way to deal with visitation, especially if, you know, maybe one parent's problematic or they live in, decide to move into different states or maybe everything's just fine. So how does that work? So every divorce is different. And I once wrote a column that a divorce is like a snowflake. Every single one is different. But usually how they start is they try to make, um, when it comes to visitation with the kids, 50-50. So I actually just worked on a case where um, I said, I was working with the wife and I said, you're gonna list all the holidays, all the weekends, um, you know, all the days off from school. We'll start with the holidays. Usually what parents do is they do an odd even. So for example, maybe in the odd years, you have Labor Day, your spouse has 
you know, the even years Labor Day, then you'd move to the next holiday. I'm just going right off the top of my cup. But, you know, we'll, we'll say Thanksgiving. And then maybe the next parent has the odd because they just had an even. And you keep rotating uh, where, again, it's 50-50 for everybody. And you make it even. When everybody feels that they are being heard, when everybody feels that it's equal, people, for the most part, at least we hope, will begin to feel like they've been heard, that it's fair, and they will agree to these things. Now, the one thing in terms of custody, that's really like a fancy word for decision making and a lot of times where the kids are going to sleep at night. So that's where you hear sole custody and legal custody. But custody and visitation can always be changed. And the word that they use in the legal industry is modified. So if for some reason a parent is dealing maybe with a personal issue, parent has to move away, um, a parent maybe, you know, it just can't keep the schedule that they originally signed off for, you can go back and modify that. So the good thing for parents is it's not set in stone. There is always flexibility. It's the financial part that once it's signed, that's done. So that's why I tell people you really need to pay attention and um, and understand what it is that um, you know you're dealing with in terms of the numbers. It's very interesting. I always wondered how that worked because, like I said, I had always had friends. I like, oh, I'm spending this weekend at dad, and then I live mm -hmm. with mom. But then I want to move in with dad, and it was always a lot. But the way you explain it is very simple, very interesting. Now, moving on. The to good thing, you know, the good thing is not to interrupt. Sorry. The good thing is people can be very creative with them and you can find what works for you. It doesn't have to be the cookie cutter, you know, every other weekend with this parent that people that people think, you know, the beauty of is if two parents can work together. OK, and leave your feelings at the door. I always say anger is expensive. It's going to cost you. And that's not a fun bill you want to get at the end of the month. It really can work. Uh, very well for a lot of people. And now what's the difference between alimony, spousal support, stuff like that? You always hear, especially with um, celebrity divorces, like mm -hmm. you just mentioned, it's like, oh, so-and-so is demanding alimony and spousal support. What's the difference and how does that work? Spousal support, alimony, maintenance, it's all the same thing. It just depends where you live. Everybody has a different term for it, but usually um, it's monies. Like, for example, in New York, uh, you're entitled to um, up to what's called a third of the marriage. So if you're married, let's just say, I don't know, you know, 10 years, do a third of that. And that's what you're entitled to under the law. Now, again, you want to talk to an attorney and look up what the law is in your state because they do vary um, based on where you live. So, you know, you receive those payments, they, you receive them every month. And then after the expiration date, which you will have, and they will be fully written out in your agreement, those portions of the payments will stop. And then, you know, children get uh, child support here in New York. It's up to age 21, unless they are special needs children and a child is entitled to receive payments up to age 26. And in some states, you can receive them for the duration of the child's life. That's very interesting how that works. I was, I was, I was actually going to be my next question. How, what about child support? So that I like this. I'm learning so much about yeah. this. Now, <laughs> what about, you mentioned before, community states? I know California is a community state. Mm -hmm. How does that work and what exactly gets divided? So basically what they, so a lot of times what happens, and this is where you really have to kind of know all the facts. You want to make sure nobody has signed what's called a prenuptial agreement or a postnuptial agreement. Um, what are those documents and what's the difference? Prenuptial agreements are before the marriage. Postnuptial agreements people uh, can do anytime after the marriage um, because people start accumulating a lot of things. Maybe one person was making a lot of money from their job. And, you know, that was separate because maybe the other side didn't work or didn't make as much or wasn't contributing financially as much. And so they asked this person, you know, the other spouse to sign this. It's kind of like a contract that says if we ever divorce, here's either what you're going to get or not going to get. Um, it kind of is a clean break. So it saves a lot in, in legal bills. I know people say it sounds so unromantic. It really is there to protect everybody. Um, especially if you're the one with more money, you want to protect it. 
Uh, you worked for it, you earned it, you want it. Um, but in terms of, you know, dividing the assets, they're going to look, and this is where you really need a really good attorney, what you both have um, accumulated while you were married. And that's how things get divided. So they're going to look at things in, uh, also before the marriage. Again, what I just said, what you accumulated uh, during the marriage, and that's how things get divided. Uh, Texas is another state that does um, community property. New York is what's called equitable distribution. Doesn't necessarily mean 50-50, but again, they're going to look a lot, of, a lot at the factors that I just told you about, and then they're going to come up with um, with what they think is fair under the law for both sides. So I always try to tell people that whole perception is I'm going to take them for everything. I'm leaving them nothing. No. <laughs> That's just a myth. That was just the movies. It doesn't exist. There are laws in place to protect everybody, um, even when it comes to child support. If you have a deadbeat parent that is not paying, again, laws are there to protect you. And if the courts do find that you are not paying your monthly child support bills um, or payments, I should say, I mean, they can they can put you in jail. They can take away your passport. They can take away your driver's license, working licenses. So you, know, you really don't want to mess with things, um, especially when it comes to these kind of payments. Interesting. And what do you think, going, since we both work in the celebrity world, what do you think is the biggest mistake celebrity couples make when they divorce? I mean, we've seen Cheryl Burke and her divorce. We've mm -hmm. seen the Brangelina divorce. We've mm -hmm. seen Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner. What do you think is the biggest mistake couples like that make? Talking. Talking. And they put so much on social media. And I mean, it's nobody's business but your own. And people keep forgetting that, um, you know, one, if you have children, the, you know, your, your children can see it, your children's friends, parents can see it, and their friends can see it. And then your kid has to go to school and hear about, oh, your, your mommy did this, or your daddy did this, or I read this, or I saw, how's your child going to feel? Your child is already probably reeling in the whole fact that parents are getting divorced and it's a very difficult time for them. Now all this. So I try to tell people, if you if you have somebody you can confide in, a therapist, a close friend, uh, a relative, leave it there. No need to post everything. Um, it's unnecessary. It's hurtful. It's harmful. It could also work against you in court, especially in a settlement. So you really want to be very careful um, about uh, things that you do and who you say these things to. You know, celebrities, I get it. Who can I trust? It's hard for them to go anywhere. They're always being photographed. They could be sitting at uh, at a coffee place and somebody could be behind them pressing record to pick up maybe, you know, parts of their conversation that they want to try to get into the media. So, you know, try to be very careful where you have these conversations with your friends. Maybe do it in the comforts of your own home, in your car. Um, you know, just be careful. And coming from the celebrity world, I, I do understand the challenges that they face. I've interviewed some of them about their uh, about their own divorces, but you know, try to leave as much as you can behind closed doors. And I always say to anybody, celebrity or non-celebrity, remember your audience. Yeah. And speaking of social media and stuff like that, is there going to, do you think there'll ever be a law that maybe they'll say you can't pronounce, I mean, not a law is not the right word, but maybe like um, they can say not to post so, something on social media or you can put something in a prenup saying in the event of a divorce, you're not allowed to mention anything on social media regarding the divorce. I mean, yes. So I, I knew of a divorce, not non-celebrity couple and it was the wife who was playing the whole thing out on social media. And the husband went to court, showed the court, not only was um, she sanctioned, meaning fined, but she walked away with nothing. And so he didn't have to pay her a dime in anything. They didn't have kids, but she collected no alimony, okay? Other things she was entitled to, she, she basically got punished. And, you know, you can't do that. That's slander. You're not only hurting somebody mentally and emotionally, but you could be hurting them professionally. You can't interfere with somebody's ability to work or somebody's ability to live. So if you want to post on social media, that will work against you. So I always try to tell people to stay off social media. Bad.
Yes, I agree. I absolutely agree. And that's not just for divorce. That's for anything. You got to be really careful what you post. People kind have of gone into court. Yeah, so people have gone into court and uh, you go in with an attorney and you have to write what's called a motion. Motion is just asking the court permission to hear whatever it is that you know you want them to uh, to listen to. In this case, you know, my spouse is putting all this stuff on social media. So yes, they can say, you know, person A, stop it. They can uh, order something and then you are court ordered not to do it. But for the most part, usually in this day and age where social media is so prominent and a big part of our lives, when you're sitting with an attorney and they're going over the do's and the don'ts, usually they always say no social media. I like that rule. I definitely like that rule. And going back to your show, how um, is it going to work? Is it a whole series? Is it a mini series? Mm -hmm. And what else can we expect to see on it? Yeah, so the show is called Ways Through Divorce, and it's on your home TV and Roku. We shot 10 episodes, and we dropped the first four. So we're going to address um, very much like what we were talking about earlier in this discussion, the assets, what you're entitled to, and how you can get them. Uh, we're going to discuss men and divorce, and we're debunking a lot of myths when it comes to men and divorce. Uh, so that was really interesting and eye-opening. We're also talking about um, the benefit of having what's called a parent coordinator. So this is after the parents are divorced, and maybe they just cannot get along, and they cannot come to decisions on stuff. They're always bickering about things. The parent coordinator is like a referee. And they kind of step in and get both sides to kind of limit the conflict, which is very beneficial, not only for them mentally and emotionally, but also for the children. Children don't need to hear all that. Um, and we're also talking about how to date after a divorce, because at some point people do want to get back out there and start meeting people. So we're talking about um, how to do it and also how to do it safely, especially in this day and age. Um, we shot, as I said, a, uh, 10 episodes in total. They'll drop every three weeks. And everything is a different, we're, we're looking at divorce from so many different angles. We're going to talk about the benefits of traveling when you're going through a divorce. Uh, we're going to talk to a celebrity about the importance of a proper diet and a regular exercise routine and what that can do for you mentally and emotionally, and it leads to much better decision making. Um, also, getting back to the high conflict. We have the world's number one high conflict expert who's going to teach people strategies on if they are dealing with a high conflict spouse, you know, how to handle uh, these matters, uh, which can, as I said earlier, get very, very uh, costly. So, you know, we're looking at this from, from all different angles. Um, and then we'll start shooting probably right after the summer. We'll start shooting our next batch of episodes. But each one was um, carefully put together. There's no like, bad language here. We don't have two sides kind of beating, you know, up the other. That's not what this platform was designed for. It was designed to give people a free education. You don't have to pay for a consultation where, you know, they only give you 15, 20 minutes of their time. We are giving you up to 30 minutes of free information to help you navigate through the many directions a divorce will take you. I love that. And where can we follow you on social media so we can continue to follow the show, your career, see stuff that you've done in the past? Yeah. So we just started an Instagram for the show. Uh, so it's uh, on Instagram. It's at Ways Through Divorce. And that's T-H-R-U. Uh, if you notice our logo, it's, you know, we go through all different arrows. So directions. So the through like a, a U-turn to keep with the theme. Um my social media handle on Instagram is just at Alyssa Pan. It's just plain and simple, uh, my name. And we're always posting things that we're working on, not only for the television show, but for the radio show, which is now going into its third year uh, next month. And that's called the Divorce Hour. And we're really excited about that. Um, it was supposed to be this Saturday afternoon show. We grew to a Saturday, Sunday uh, show. Plus now we're available on 14 podcasts. Um, so we're really excited. I didn't even think we'd make it past six months. And here we are celebrating three years. Um, but again, very in-depth discussions with experts in all different areas to help people really understand all the different directions, all the many roads and paths that a divorce will take them. I always tell people, I'm not your JD or your PhD or your CPA, but I am your GPS. And I will guide you every step of the way. I love that. Well, it was amazing to speak to you. I'm so proud Thank of you. And you. I can't wait to do this again soon. 
Oh, I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Right. I'm so honored. You're welcome. All right. We'll talk again soon. Have a good night. I look, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye.